what is going on guys? I am Black Ops Amazing. Welcome yourselves back to another zombies video on the channel where today we are back with another Q&A where we take your questions from the comment section below to do with the zombie storyline, easter eggs and just a few other things as well and answer them. So as always, you know what to do. Drop a like rating only if you feel like it. It's totally up to you guys. But if we could shoot for 1k likes on this video, that'd be very much appreciated. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest zombies content on the channel. Click the bell notification icon and here we go. So as always, loads of questions to answer from you guys today. And the first one from Zeki Smith says, is Stanley Ferguson in hell with the Mob of the Dead crew? If so, why? So that's a good question because we know that Stanley Ferguson was seemingly a good guy. He was a god. He worked with Alcatraz. He hadn't done anything wrong. He was a good person. So why would Stanley Ferguson be trapped in purgatory with the Mob of the Dead crew who were sinners? Now, like I just said, they are in purgatory. They are trapped in this endless cycle in kind of like the afterlife or purgatory. Purgatory actually means a place of state or suffering inhabited by souls of sinners who are exploiting their sins before going to heaven. I mean, I don't know if they'd be going to heaven, hell maybe, but that's what purgatory means. And that's exactly what's going on in Mob of the Dead. Our characters are trapped here, their souls are stuck here until, as we know, they exploit their sins and break the cycle. Basically until they realise what they've done and let Al get revenge by killing them. So they're trapped in purgatory for that reason, but as you're saying, why is Stanley Ferguson here? He's a good guy from what we know, he hasn't done anything bad, so why would he also be in purgatory? Well, we don't actually see Stanley Ferguson here. What we see instead is him, but is this hellish monster. Brutus is Stanley Ferguson that exists in purgatory. We can see in the Mob of the Dead intro cutscene Stanley Ferguson being stabbed and killed, but we know in real life that didn't happen. In real life he's still alive, but in this intro cutscene he's killed by the weasel and so it seems, along with the characters, Stanley Ferguson gets sent to purgatory to get his revenge on them killing him. He gets sent back as Brutus, as the warden, to stop them. This intro cutscene, what we see at the start of Mob of the Dead, is actually already taking place in purgatory. This is like the beginning of it because we can see not too long after prisoners and the guards all turn into zombies So this intro cutscene is already in purgatory and that explains why we see Stanley Ferguson being stabbed in real life He isn't stabbed. He's never killed but in purgatory he is and so because of that he comes back as Brutus to get revenge. So that should explain why Stanley Ferguson, even though he isn't actually in hell, he kind of is. It's confusing. Mob of the Dead is really confusing. I have done a full storyline video on it. If you want to check it out, I will link it down in the description. I know I always forget to do it every time I say it, but just remind me or hopefully I will remember. Did Kale NWO says, in World at War in a campaign mission, you can get the ray gun. Is that somehow connected to zombies? And the simple answer is no. This was just a mini Easter egg that Treyarch added into the World at War campaign. You can, in fact, get the ray gun. Just a cool little fun weapon to use. It's nothing to do with zombies. Like I said, it's just an Easter egg, just a reference to it. You can actually also get more zombies weapons in the campaigns as well. In Black Ops, you can actually get the Thunder Gun. And I believe there may be another weapon you can get in a campaign as well. I can't quite remember. I think you can actually see the jet gun in Black Ops 2 if I'm not wrong. So you can see these weapons, you can get them. It's a reference to zombies, but it's not connected in any way. They're totally two separate universes. Brody100 says, I have a question. Why in the giant cutscene do the 2.0 characters tell the 1.0 Richtofen not to open the teleporter when they were working with him? So you've actually got more questions there. I can't actually understand what you're trying to say. Your wording's a little mixed up, but I will answer your first question. So like you said, why in the giant do the premise characters tell the original version of Richtofen not to open the teleporter door. If they knew that the premise version of Richtofen's gonna be behind there, and obviously they're working with him, all of the premise characters, Takio, Nikolai, Dempsey, and Richtofen are working together. If they knew he was gonna be behind the teleporter door in the giant, why did they tell the original version of him not to open the door? Surely they'd want him to open the door so the premise version could come out and kill him. It doesn't make sense. Richtofen! Whatever you're thinking of doing, don't do it! You do not want to meet what's on the other side of that door! You cannot begin to comprehend the great evil you could unleash! Well, this was always something to me when we first saw the intro that was a bit confusing. And there could be a few different explanations. The first one could be that maybe the premise characters didn't know Richtofen 
was behind the teleporter door. They didn't know the premise version of Richtofen was going to be there. Maybe they thought it was someone else. A hellhound, maybe a different version of the OG Richtofen. I mean, that wouldn't really make sense. But one reason could be that maybe they thought someone bad or something bad was behind that teleporter. Like I said, that really doesn't make too much sense. Another one could be is that they knew Primus Richtofen was behind the door, but they didn't want him to open it because, well, they didn't trust him. And so they wanted to do the job for themselves. Just like they'd been doing already, they wanted to kill this version of Richtofen themselves in case the Primus version lied and they teamed up or something. Again, I don't know. Or the third one could be, and I think this one's the most likely, is that, again, they knew the premise version of Richtofen was behind the door, but the reason they told the OG version not to open it was because they were trying to trick him. What they were doing was reverse psychology. They knew that the original version of Richtofen is evil. He loves everything evil, and so if they told him not to open that teleporter door, they told him that whatever's behind there is bad, and if he opens that door, he will unleash a great evil. They knew if they told him that, he would open the door. It's reverse psychology. They're making it seem like they don't want him to do it, but in reality, they do because they know that the premise version is behind there and that he's going to kill him. And so by telling Richtofen not to open the door, he could unleash a great evil. Well, they know that's exactly what Richtofen's going to do because he wants to unleash great evil. So that's what he did. He opened the door. The premise version came out and killed him. That's exactly what the premise characters actually wanted to happen. Like I said, that's a little bit confusing maybe for some of you. A lot of things in the zombie storyline are confusing and really difficult to explain, but hopefully I've done a good enough job. So the next question of today from the Skull Stasher. Jesus Christ. 23 says, hey Black Ops Amazing, love your videos and my question is, where did the gems on the Origin staffs come from? So again, that's a good question because we don't actually know how the staffs were built. We know that they were made by Maxis on May the 21st of 1917 in Origins, where using information from Pablo's journal and also from the tomb's main chamber, Maxis drew up schematics for the creation of the four elemental staffs and then instructed Richtofen to begin building them. This is one of the schematics that Maxis drew up of the elemental staffs that he wanted Richtofen to build. You can see on it he's explained a few things. He's labelled the part that holds the gem, the crystal housing. He obviously had an outline or some kind of idea what these original staffs looked like, and so he's created exact replicas. He would have used all of this information from Pablo's journal. Remember that Pablo was alive during the Great War. He witnessed the premise characters and he also saw the original staff. So obviously he documented everything about them, how they worked and how they looked in his journal. And also like it says, Maxis saw the giant premise statues and origins where the staffs are held and he used information from that as well. So combining those two things together, he took all of that info and created quite exact replicas of the original staffs. And as I said, this is one of the drawings that he did for Richtofen. There's another one that he drew up. You can see it says, the ancient text speaks of four elemental crystals that powered the staffs, which I think are, and then the rest of the writing is ripped off. Maybe that says the locations of them, or that says what exactly they are or something. I don't know. There's another one with the top of the staff. We've got the stone gullet. It's kind of difficult to see what he's put here because of the writing. He's also labeled unknown crystal. So it's clear that Maxis had everything thing about these staffs, but the only thing that he was missing was the crystals. He knew that they were used to power them, but it seems like maybe he didn't know where exactly to get them from, or how exactly to replicate them, or maybe even how they actually worked. So to try and answer your question, where did the gems from the staffs come from? Well, we don't know exactly where Maxis got the crystals. You can see even in his documents, there's a lot of confusion. I doubt that these are the original crystals that were used in the original staffs. We know that these ones are replicas. So maybe somehow has he managed to recreate the original crystals? Is there a small possibility he found the original ones. I honestly don't know. I'd actually love to hear where he got these crystals from, how he knew exactly what to do. There's still a lot of mystery behind the staffs. I'd love to also see the original ones in use to see how similar they were to these replicas. Maybe they are quite a bit different. They do look similar, but maybe they work in different ways and Maxis just thought he was right. Honestly, I don't know, but it's definitely 
interesting. So anyway guys, there we go. That is all I have for you for today's video. As always, hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, you know what to do. Drop a like rating if you haven't already. If you don't want to, it's totally up to you guys. It's fine, you don't have to if you don't want to. But make sure you are also subscribed to stay up to date with the latest zombies videos on the channel. And also to make sure you don't miss an upload, click the bell notification icon as well. If there's any questions, anything that you want to know to do with zombies, make sure your comments are uh, kind of complicated and I would say interesting because I've answered so many comments already that it's really difficult to pick one. If I don't end up picking your question, it's more than likely because I have answered it in the past, but leave any questions you have in the comment section below. Anyway, of course, thank you all for watching and I will see you all next time. Until then, goodbye.